Okay, folks, I think we're live. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, tonight on the Hack Show, we've got the one and only Dave R. Guitar, known to the stars as the late, the king of late night chats. <laughs> how's it going, buddy? Hey, how's it going? Doing all right, man. How are you today, Hack? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. Now, I see you're wearing the colors. Yep. Sport, yep. Two sport hacks. the colors. Two hacks. Do it. It's awesome, man. Quentin, Quentin. All right. Well, we got to do that officially in a minute. Let me just yeah. say hello to everybody that's in here. Let's see what we got in the chat here. Okay, we'll go right to the top. We got Mr. Todd Flowers, buddy. How are you? Uh, we got some guy named Dave R's Guitars. Uh, Bill Frost. Nice chatting you earlier. Yep, on Facebook. That was cool. Ben Coombs is in the house. How are you, Ben? Charles Green is here. And uh, Jeff Rupplinger, welcome. Brian Cote is here. Thanks for popping in, guys. Will Varela, Will. It's an all kiss show. It's all we're talking about today's kiss, just uh, FYI. Uh, Daniel Horsley is here. Welcome. Wow, everybody just started popping in. This is what always happens. And then the friggin' chat jumps on me. Okay. Janice Lala is here. Blimpus. Hey, buddy. The return of <laughs> <laughs> Vincent. Okay, but I'm still wearing pants. Okay, I haven't switched to a skirt yet, so I'm still okay. That would be mini Vincent. <laughs> mini Vincent. That's it. Jasko Plumbing, how are you, man? Nice to see you. Gary Tholander, Chicken Guitars. It's a Pink Floyd special. All Pink Floyd. That's what we're talking Woo about. Rock and Roll Guitar Lounge. How's it going? Uh, Jimmy T. Hey, man. Brian Landreth, how, how you doing? BC Rich 581, welcome. Hey, Janice Lala's ship has shirt has shipped. Awesome. EVH, Eric, how are you, buddy? R2 R3, there's my man. How are you? Woo! Got the whole gang. Okay, out. Rich. <laughs> Mitch Heyman is here. Landon the boy. Well, everybody's popping in. You guys rock. Thanks so much for popping in, man. Really appreciate it. Yeah, you got you guys are great. Appreciate you. Yeah, awesome. Best freaking community on YouTube. I don't give a shit. Absolutely. Rock. I second that. Yeah, man. Aaron Songs, welcome. Charlie Us, welcome. You guys rock. All right, cool. So, all the cool kids are here. You got a Quentin. Okay, so you know what? Let's do the Quentin shout out. All right. Okay, on a count of three. Ready? All right. Let's do One, it. One, two, three. Quentin! Quentin. Holy shit. There's a cookie monster actually going there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> It's yeah, gonna scare the shit out of Sylvester right there, man. A <laughs> little oh, different, God. little different angle tonight, Janice. Yeah, man. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So we're talking a little bit off air. We're talking a lot of a lot of off air. I was like, man, let's just start the show now. Oh, 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 oh wait a minute. We got it. Um, before we get into it, we got an emergency call here. Mitch Heyman is saying, "Guitar hack, my Les Paul is going back, buzzing or." Hum to loud, but stops when I hit the strings. This is, this is now, right? Okay. Um, that to me, okay. You're the expert, Dave, but for me, that sounds like a grounding thing. It usually is a ground ground issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get that checked out, quite, and it's a wiring thing inside the guitar. Just just start tracing the ground wires. Yeah, yeah, because humbuckers should not hum. <laughs> That's now, to be point. to to be fair, I have actually a couple of mine do it. So, and and I know all my grounds are hooked up, but yeah, yeah. The other thing I would say, okay, speak. You want to put my electrician? No, I'm anything but now. an I'm anything but an expert. There's the expert right there, Gary Holt. Hey, man. Yeah, dry heat. Hey, welcome. I yeah, try that. And uh, if you've got an isolated ground receptacle that you know of in your house, plug it in there if it still happens. Then it's definitely a guitar issue. Yeah. Yeah, take it back, man. Take it back. Uh okay, so Dave R. So we were just talking about playing and getting started playing, and you were mentioning much way, way early on that you were taking lessons. So let's start with that because what I want to get into is I want to know how the hell you know so much about freaking guitars. But we'll get there. Oh, man. Let's start at the beginning. That's a long story, man. Oh boy. <laughs> well, we got time. Yeah, um, so 1987, I decided, actually, 
little known fact, I decided I wanted to learn how to play bass. Go oh, figure. Boy. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to, Good night, everybody. <laughs> I wanted to learn how to play bass. And uh, of course, my old man said, nope, you're going to learn to play six strings before you learn to play bass. And and that's kind of where it started. Um, and I, I think most of you guys know it was, you know, a combination of it was mostly Motley Crue that, that, that sent me over the edge and said, OK, right. I want to learn how to play. So. Yeah, so uh, music teacher, um, music teacher at, at, at my school, uh, he he volunteered, stepped up to give me lessons, and uh, I took oh probably six months worth of lessons on on my old man's old acoustic, and it was uh, it was pretty rough, you know. It's like I told you before, the action was like like this. It was atrocious, and I never practiced. So, yeah. you know, but, uh, first, uh, yeah, that, that Christmas, my, my grandfather bought me my first, first electric and, and, uh, yeah, that's when, that's when things kind of took off. I, What'd you get? What was that? What was that guitar you got? So it was an Aria Pro 2 RS Night Warrior. <clears throat> it was, okay. uh, it was white with black, black guard, black headstock. And I no longer have that guitar. It was, uh, <clears throat> It was liberated from me in about 1996. Mm. It and several others. <laughs> <laughs> I recovered one, which was the which you guys have seen the red BC Rich. Right, right. Um, that was that was the one survivor, and that's the one I bought my. That was the first guitar I ever bought myself, and that was '93 uh, when I graduated high school. Right, right. So, like, so. You said you went for lessons, but are you like mainly a self-taught guy? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, you know, he, he taught me some chords. He taught me. He taught me like the blues scale. Right. <clears throat> and uh, and it wasn't a, a, an in position blues scale. It was a sliding blues scale. And um, mm. you know, I mean, cover covers what three positions? You know what I'm talking about? The, the extended scale, yeah. Extended, yeah, extended blue scale. I mean, covers like three positions, and you know, of course, I never, I never learned what pentatonic scale was until years later. Right. And uh, he taught me how to taught me how to read tabs, and that was, you know, after that, I just kind of, you know, started learning on my own, listening to, listening to stuff, buying magazines, buying books. You know, if, if I liked it, I would try to find it in a, in you know one of the one of the publications and uh, try and learn it off tap or, or sit and try and learn it from here. Did, did you, did you do like the, you know, the band thing with the neighborhood kids, any of that? Nope, I did not. So you never played with a band? I, so when I was in high school, I did start playing with the, with, with a few other, few other musicians um one of them actually has gone on to do some pretty pretty cool things he was a drummer mm -hmm. um but other than that um after and and that was yeah that lasted for about a year year and some change right and after that nah i haven't i haven't played with any any other musicians to speak of but well, I mean, as long as you're cool with that, I you know, hey, whatever. I, I would love to be to be fair. I would I would love to. Um, I my my rhythm has always been pretty pretty atrocious, and the last you know, the last couple of years, I've I've you know been kind of digging down and and you know trying to correct some of that. But right, right. So, cool, cool. Okay, so, so. You, so that you've been playing in what you said like 87 87 yeah okay so i'm trying to do some math now so that's like you've been playing years. over 30 years 32 years yeah right yeah wow cool cool and you but like you i mean i as you know <laughs> i'm one of those late night guys that watches your stuff right and i i'm not sitting there like how the freaking hell does this guy know that many freaking socks well 
to be fair, I, I know parts of songs, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, let's just call a horse a horse, man. You know, I, I know I know parts of songs. I know lots of parts of lots of songs. I don't I don't know a I don't know a ton of songs all the way through. I mean now, yeah, okay, I can play most of Dark Side of the Moon all the way through. <laughs> yeah, I know. And it works great because I always get to sleep like that. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Don't get mad. I'm kidding. It's a joke. No, dude, you're you're fine. <laughs> Yeah, that's funny. That's funny. No, uh, because usually if somebody knows that many songs, I'm thinking like, man, they, they they're playing the cover band, and and at some point they've learned all these songs. But you just know them. Just I guess if you want to learn how to know, or sorry, if you want to learn a song, you just go learn it, and then yeah. it stays in the memory bank, right? Yeah. Now, uh, I'm my personality is a little obsessive, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean. Let's again. Let's call a horse a horse. <laughs> I'm a little obsessive, so and I'm uh, I'm in in that in that obsessiveness comes like the the perfectionist, right? So I will sit and and work on something, work on some, work on something till I till I frustrate myself to death. Stop for a little bit, do something else, and come back and continue, 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 continue until it's complete muscle memory. Right. And, you know, I can play it almost perfect, slightly perfect, most of the, you know, nine out yeah, of yeah. times. And so, and that stuff sticks. Yeah. Uh, let me just catch up on a few more people that popped in. Lennon the boy is here. Look, there's Chris, guitar pit. No way. Yeah. Get out of here. Yeah. Oh, we got the celebrities in here today. Yeah, we do. Uh, okay, let me get caught up here. Let me get caught up here. I, I tell you who else, I tell you who impressed me last night. That was Mitch Heyman. Oh, uh, Mitch Heyman is a monster. He doesn't know yet. <laughs> no, he doesn't. He doesn't realize it, but he's pretty damn good. Yeah. Uh, hey, there's, there's oh, here's a question. Here's a question uh, from Chicken Guitars. Dave Ars Guitars knows it all. He knew the exact fraction of an inch to low. Lo I think she means locate the neck plate on my telly build. I'm going to get into that because you're like friggin' Rain Man. Like when it goes to guitars, it's like, holy shit, how the hell does he know that? Uh... It's crazy. But we'll get into that in a minute. Rock and Roll Guitar Lounge is here. Crew, Thomas Santiago, David Ozab, welcome. Let me just get caught. Nocturnal, thanks for popping in. Mark Dillon. Uh, Mitch Amy says, I don't know any songs all the way through well what you do know sounds pretty damn good <clears throat> hey gussie walls is here rick hefner is here sorry folks the chat is jumping on me man <laughs> it always happens let's see i, let's see. I just want to say something real quick Go I, for it. I want to thank every one of you guys i really I, I appreciate you guys show, showing me and hack some love tonight so you guys you guys absolutely rock you guys oh, rock. Thank you. I agree. I agree totally. Hey, James Severin. Okay, if I miss the name and you catch it, let me know. Here's Mark Pete Taylor. Hickson. Pete Hickson is here. Okay, guys, if you've got questions for myself or Dave, please tag. And there's a the guitar pit. How are you, man? Uh, if you've got questions for myself or Dave, please uh, tag myself or Dave. We're both in the chat. So we can see you. So we can see you. Awesome. Yeah. So, all right. So, but before I get into like how the hell you know so much about guitars, like, <laughs> the, the musical part of this. So, you you said you you, you had. So you, let let's let's get into the guitar history. So you mentioned the aria. So where did you go from that, guitar wise? Craig Cochran. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Aaron songs too. Yeah, I caught Aaron, I believe. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Um, and by the way, thanks, Aaron. I uh, appreciate the compliment, man. Um, so where did I go from the aria? Uh, I'm trying to remember, man. It's been it's, it's been a hot minute. <laughs> um, okay, so how about I, this? What was the what was the guy? Because everybody's got a guy, or or a band. 
It was Randy. Or girl, I shouldn't. It was say Randy shit. Rhodes, hands down. It was it was Randy Rhodes all the way. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to be careful, R two. I'm going to be careful today. Thanks, buddy. Thanks for reminding me. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Oh, buddy. If you see a name that says Harry or yeah, Harry or Yarick, <laughs> I'm not saying a word. Okay. Son <laughs> <laughs> of a bitch. <laughs> go ahead. Oh, man. No, so, yeah, you know, it, so by, by the time I got my guitar, um, the, the tribute album had come out, the Ozzy Randy tribute album. Right. And I went just headlong right into it. Right. And I I wanted to absorb and learn everything because Randy, there's just something about his playing that just, I mean, it was so fluid. It was, it was just, there was, there was enough, there was enough classical influence. There was enough, you know, blues. There was enough blues, rock yeah. in there. I mean, mm -hmm. it was just, it, to me, it was, it just spoke to me. Right. And so, yeah, I mean, it was, it was Randy. It was, it was all Randy. Cool. So, uh, so after after the Aria, I started picking up uh, uh, Japanese Les Paul copies. Mm -hmm. um, pick had a couple of those. Uh, had surprise. a eh, let's see, Lotus. I had a Lotus Les Paul. I had a Lincoln Les Paul. Both of them, both of them came right out of uh, Matsuma or whatever it is, Japan. Uh, and I had a. I don't remember the name of it. it was a it was an explorer copy. Mm -hmm. uh, so I had I had like I had those floating around, um, and which I, I you know that's my, the the first real guitar that I ever played was a 1968 Les Paul Custom. Wow, nice! <laughs> and that was my that was my teacher. It, he he had you know he he'd bought it off of some somebody for five hundred bucks. Oh wow, that's a <laughs> deal, man. I mean, you know, it was like perfect. It was like perfect condition, you know. It just a just a beauty of a guitar. But and, and that that set in my mind that I will I, I will one day own a custom. And and of course, as you guys know, I have a custom. <laughs> you know, I and this is probably going to freak people out. It freaks me out. I've never played a custom. Never, buddy. <laughs> you, 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 come, you come to my house and you can play it all you want. Oh man, I've never <laughs> played a custom. I've played R nines, R eights, R O's, all the Gibson flavors, but I've never put my hands on a custom. It, so I haven't played one ever. It, I'll, I'll tell you this: I, I've played some of the modern, modern customs from from the eighties, from the, from the late eighties. So from, from the Jeskowitz era. So from 86 to, you know, present day and they don't play anything like the Norland era. Cause so from 68 to, you know, 68 to 80, mm. 85, 86, they're, mm. they're, they're just completely different animals. Wow. Um, I, I, if you can get your hands on an older one, so, mid 80s and earlier try try one of those that they, they, they are like ben says they are a completely different beast uh chicken guitars has got a question for you what's the cringiest repair or build advice you ever saw on youtube <sighs> <laughs> did i just hit a nerve <laughs> <sighs> cringiest uh Somebody telling somebody to clean their guitar with acetone. Oh my god! Yeah, that's probably the hands down like one of the worst things I've ever heard. Oh. And I'm like, no, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to take all the paint off I'll of it, go for it. Off. How come my guitar is all bubbly? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Right. Oh, I love that bubbly finish on that guitar. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh uh, yeah. That, that's gonna make the resale great on it, isn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Michael Bishop is here. Ben Mazi is here. Frank Corcoran is here. Man, Mark you got Taylor. Uh, wow. How many? How many do we have, Hack? 
Dale Palmer. Chicken Guitars, I don't even know you. Chicken Guitars doesn't know who I am. 54 <laughs> people right now. How many? Did I forget to say hello. I apologize, Chicken Guitars. Gussie Wells. Gussie Wells, a single man. You got to try one. Yeah, tell me about it. Queen Di Diana Desir, welcome. Josh Garcia. Fabulous Disaster. Man, you guys are awesome. Holy crap. You guys are awesome. Okay, I'm just I'm just scrolling real quick. I want to make sure that I haven't missed anyone. And Brian I Landreth, if I do. Brian Landreth just looks like he just popped in. Attention, attention all personnel evacuate the building. Guitar hack has never touched the custom. Thanks, R2. <laughs> R2. Oh Lord. Brian Landreth, there he is. How are you, man? Okay, I'm caught up. All right, folks. Any questions, please tag guitar hack or Tag guitar hack or tag. I was gonna say tag guitar hack or tag myself. Tag guitar hack or tag tag Dave R. All right. Okay. So let's get into that. So how the hell do you know so much about freaking guitars? Like, is it a hobby? Did you do it like full time? Did you work in a store? Like, how did that all happen? Strictly a hobby. Holy shit. <laughs> Strictly a hobby. Wow. Remember, remember how I said I'm a little bit obsessive. <laughs> <laughs> so when I, yeah, they, they, yeah, I'm in the chat, Dale. Yeah, Dale says he can't tag you. Weird. Anyway, uh, so yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit obsessive. Uh, so when I get, when I get something in my head that I, that interests me, I mm -hmm. try and devour everything I can about it. I try and learn as much as I can. Right. So, you know, and that's kind of where it started. I was I, really and truthfully where it, where it all started was on the, on the red BC rich. And I wanted to, I wanted to change out pickups and I had never swapped out pickups in a guitar. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> so that's kind of where it went. It went from there. And of course, then I'm like, oh, well, you know, <laughs> you got me, Bam. <laughs> um, or Mozzie, sorry. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I just started YouTube, reading online, you know, watching watching Dale Early, or Dan Earlywine. I mean, that guy, that guy's the master luthier. I don't think anybody else would, would, ever, uh, would, would ever argue that point. What's the name again for people that want to check him out? Dan Earlywine. Okay. He's on, uh, you'll, you'll find him on um, Stu Mac's uh, channel. Okay. Stuart McDonald, Stu Mac. Uh, the, the guy's a master. I mean, he's written more books, you know, about, about Luthery and, and uh, whatnot. Um, also, uh, Ben Crow over at um, Crimson. Uh, no, it does does a lot of shockingly enough, and and, and uh, uh, there, there there's one other. We'll just uh, we'll we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> there there was there there's another one that that I, I will give give props to every once in a while, but that that can be a, that can be a polarizing subject. Oh, okay. Well, we'll, we'll just we'll just leave it at that. Yeah, let's keep it PC friendly, shall we? Uh, <laughs> uh, actually, there's a question for you from Brian Landreth. He's asking, "What value pot for a P90? Actually, a Seymour Duncan Fat Cat." Uh, that I'm not sure off the top of my head. Most P90s are going to want a 250k. Um, listen to it. Um, yeah, you know, just kind of light hook it in with like gator clips or something. Uh, listen to see, listen to see what you can hear about it. Uh, you may want to jump up to a two or to a three hundred, but most of the time it's two fifty k for for any single coil, five hundred k for for most uh, humbuckers. Well, everybody's saying that Dan is Stu Mac, the guy that you mentioned. Yeah, Dan. Gary, uh, Gary Holt, the same guitar hack. Leo Scala is supposed to be pretty good. Okay. Uh, 
Johnny Bean. Johnny Bean is here. How are you? Hey, Johnny. Hey, and Mike is himself is here as well. How are you? Hey, Mike. Cool, cool. So you're telling me that all of this is just a hobby? Like you never, you don't fix guitars for people? You don't, you just work on your own stuff? Yeah, or? yeah. pretty much. Oh, shit. You could open up a freaking business just fixing guitars, man. <laughs> no, seriously. I've I've done a I've done a refret. I've got a I've got a neck that I bought from um, guitar fetish. Right. That I, that I wanted to just use as a use as a test bed for refrets. So I yanked the frets out of them, refretted it, just to just to see if I could do it. Just to see if you can do Let's it. See if I can do it. Yeah. See, like it, you know, like for me, like I mean, I only know what I play. Right. Right. And and if I don't know some, I'm, I'm like one thing. I, I got zero. There's no BS. Like I don't bullshit people. If I don't know, I'll tell you. I don't know. Right. Right. So I only know what I play. Right. So, or if I've tried it, or if I've looked into it, or whatever. Hey, there's but, Cheddar. Hey, Cheddar. Hey, Cheddar, how are you, man? You know, so, but uh, I find out, like, when I'm in a chat and somebody's asking me something, if you're in there, it's like, yeah, just ask Dave R. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, know. And, you know, I mean, I'll, I'll be honest, I don't always know the answer. Um, and, and, but, but I know how to use Google real good, man. <laughs> <laughs> is that what it is? I, a lot of times, you know, yeah, sure. You know, if I don't, <laughs> thanks. Yeah, I got a got a fluffy dog behind me. Um, yeah, I mean, if, if if I don't know the answer, I'll look it up. I'll try and find it. Right, because, right. You know, the, my my thing is, I guess, I guess my my biggest one of my biggest pet peeves is is, you know, education. Right. Let Let's be educated. Let's not Let's not make assumptions. Let's. Yeah, well, we, we got into a couple of debate. Like the thing is, like on your on on your channel, right? Like, late night thing. We've got into a couple of discussions. Let's say sure regarding the last one was like marketing and reality. Right, right. <laughs> Remember that exactly. <clears throat> marketing exactly. and reality. Exactly. So. But it's it's cool hearing your perspective because, you know, your your knowledge of of guitars and I mean even though it's a hobby, which kind of blows my mind. <laughs> it's like, you know, you know as much as you do, and it's a hobby. You know, um, really, you know, it freaks me out because, you know, when it comes to that sort of thing, I come at everything from a science, sure perspective, right? So, you know, and and part of part of what i do is you know in my job not necessarily music and guitar playing but another industry is right. I, I i basically separate <laughs> right marketing right. from reality this is what you hear and this the, is the truth the 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 bs from the truth yeah <laughs> well let's let's call a horse a horse again <laughs> i don't want to get into like you know, heated discussions here because no, I know no, people, no, 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 no. This, this rubs a lot of people the wrong way. But you know, what what bothers me the most though is I hate seeing people get a taken advantage of, right? Cheated out of money. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, and and I mean, it, again, it's not just you know in in the the guitar the the instrument industry. It's all other industries too. Like when I walk into a store, you know. Uh, and I'll hear somebody going on about something, and you know, my my line is, "Oh, did you read the brochure?" Right. You know, yeah, oh, I know all there is to know about this. I go, "Oh, you read a brochure," you know. <laughs> and who wrote the brochure? I wonder. Right. The marketing person wrote the brochure. So what do they know? What you know? What what reality are they? What's the foundation of that? You know. Right. Right. And it's like just perpetuating the lie, right? Yeah. And at the end of the day. You know, I mean, even earlier today, I was having a discussion with someone who is um, going to be training some people. And 
I've been tutoring him for the last couple of months and I called him today and I said, how's it going? Oh, it's going. And he asked me a couple of more questions. Like I got nothing but time for that. You know what I mean? If it's right. if, because I want to perpetuate truth. <laughs> sure, sure. And, you know, and, you know that's, I, I, I feel the same way, you know, it, it's especially where it comes to guitars and, <clears throat> You know, when I hear when I hear the, the the BS of oh lock and tuners will give you tuning stability, you know something like that. No, look, dude, if your nut if the nut isn't cut correctly, if the if the bridge saddles aren't correct, I don't care what tuners you have on it, it's not going to be stable. Right. <laughs> you know, and it's it's it's, it's myths like that <clears throat> that. Yeah, it just they they drive me nuts because yeah. the masses believe it, and it's it's marketing, right? That's the that's your marketing side. Oh, buy the you know buy these brand X tuners; they're the best tuners on the market, and they're you know one hundred and forty dollars or or whatever. And, and and I can just see these poor starving musicians, and they 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 get it in their head that oh man, I gotta have those. Right. And they go out and spend their last dime on it. And, you know, now they're now they're eating ramen noodles for for the next month. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like. But their it, guitars stay in tune. <laughs> but no, they're still having to constantly tune their yeah, guitars. I know, because just, they have the rest yeah. of it's not right. <laughs> no, I know. I'm just teasing. Uh, we got a yeah. new name in here. John's Tropical Reflections. Welcome. Welcome. Lefty Mike is here. Okay, uh, fabulous disaster. Let us talk Tonewood. Okay, I'm avoiding that subject like the plague. <laughs> yep, that's what I was saying. That's what I was saying earlier. Oh, there it is. <laughs> I'm not going there. Uh, hang on. Uh, Cheddar Kung Pao makes a con comment. I hate seeing people cheated out of money too. Hey, want to invest in my potato rental business? Rent potato <laughs> from your home. <laughs> But, you know, it, it, it kind of harkens back to our conversation the other day or the other night. Yeah. You know, and, uh, man, I just completely forgot my – lost my train of thought. <laughs> I'm old, getting forgetful. We are having a conversation the other night. Yeah. Uh, you'll have to give me a second. All right. Well, while okay. you're thinking about it, let me just say hello to some more people. Jay Steen is here, and Jay Steen has a question. I have a question. <laughs> I tested my pickup through the guitar cable and nothing shows and nothing shows, but the pickup still works. Doesn't, does that mean bad ground neck shows? I don't know what you mean by shows, but bridge doesn't sound. I'm not sure what the question is. Jay Steen. You know what he's talking about? The guitar cable. I'm no, trying to understand the question. Okay. Are, are you using a multimeter? Um, is that what you're doing? That's Trying to I test guess. it through, test it with a multimeter. Uh, nothing shows but the pickup. Make sure make sure your switch is in the right position. If the switch isn't in the right position, it's gonna show it's gonna show no reading. Because you're it's gonna get, you're gonna get one of two things if you throw a multimeter on a pickup. You're either gonna get infinity, which means it's an open circuit, or unless, you're, read unless, you're, unless you're reading DC resistance. If you're reading DC resistance, you will get a reading. Not if it's an open circuit, you won't. Which, oh, true, true. Because you will get inf you you'll get infinity. You'll either get you either have a reading or you don't. And infinity right. is not a reading. Infinity is infinity. You have an open circuit. It's either that or you get a value. Now the value that you get with a DC resistance is all dependent on the gauge of the wire and how many wraps you have because resistance is a function of length and gauge. Yeah. <laughs> And temperature. And temperature, yes, because temperature will affect the resistance. Yeah. Yep. So yeah. So but I, I but again I'm answering a question, but I don't know if I'm answering the right question. Right. Gary Tholander is going for a beer, buddy. I'm good. I got a coffee. <laughs> That's right, Dale. Offer, though, man. I got I got some beach beachfront property in Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> hey Zim's guitar is here. Welcome, Zim. How are you, man? Todd Flowers, he's talking. He's talking at the cable, not on the pup. At the cable. Well, at the cable again, depending on what you were saying, what pickup position he has, he's in. 
If he's in the wrong pickup position, he's not reading anything. He's reading infinity then because it's an open circuit. So we're back to that again. Right. Lefty Mike, how are you? Cool, cool. So did you remember what you were trying to say earlier? No. (laughs) It completely eludes me. It's okay. Yeah. Well, the, the thing the thing with the locking tuners, I mean, the benefit of the locking tuners is, you know, and here's 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 the thing too, and 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 here something I oh wait a minute, yeah, I had it plugged in, it shows through the pickup itself. That's Jay Steen. Okay, make make sure your make sure your switch is in the right setting to measure to measure the the pickup. I mean, if your if your neck pickup is showing, and the guitar still plays even in the bridge and just make sure your make sure your uh switch is in the right position if not then you need to start tracing wires todd gruff is in here welcome queen b is in here hello munchkins in the munchkin land <laughs> hey queen b nice to see you um yeah the thing with the locking tuners and, and here's where like i'm i'm also a little bit I don't know, call me traditionalist or stupid, but even with the locking tuner, I'll still put like three wraps on every string. <laughs> I, I've learned with locking tuners, you know, and, and you know, that's fine. Yeah. Um, you know, I'll, I'll, the, the, the way I look at locking tuners, they save me a couple minutes. That's it. Yeah. It's a time saver. It's a, it's a little bit of a time saver. And really and truthfully, by the, by the, I have so many guitars and I think I have one, two, I think I have three guitars that have lock and tuners. Yeah. Three. Out of, out of like, I don't know, 20 ish. And well, go ahead. I can do it. I can, I can string a guitar so fast because I have a lot of guitars to string. <laughs> I mean, it almost takes me longer to to do a lock in than it does normal tuners. And my philosophy is, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right, right. Uh, Dwight Bailey is here. Brad Miller is here. Okay, so Jay Steen is saying, I switch the setting and it's still not showing. When I go inside the cavity, I get resi- I can get resistance though. Well, then you- it's not wired. Are, are you getting resistance on the pot? Or at the pot? If you're getting resistance at the pot, then you, you, you need to look at your wiring. Check Gary your- Holt, Guitar Hack, being in the electronics industry for 35 years, I found that I found bad, bad grounds and cold solder are 90%. Yes, bad solder will, joints. Yes, I will agree with that. Or cold solder joints where you don't apply enough heat and basically you got a bump of solder, but it's not adhering to anything. Yeah. Uh, John's tropical reflection, the type of white tail that wags behind me from time to time is a Siberian Husky, solid white. So Rick Hefner is saying, so you're saying locking tuners have no effect on tuning stability guitar hack. If the no. gears are holding, if the, if the tuners aren't slipping, they're not slipping. Exactly. Is there more to it than that? No. If you've got the if you've got the string wrapped around properly, where you, you know, I mean, where you don't have the string biting on top of the string, where right. you know, like you have it one wrap under another, and you start high and you go low. By the way, right, right. right? It should be fine. The right. only issue I had with with um, I was going to say this earlier with tuners is, where I, it's I, I, it's I it's think. Fine. I think Bam just said it best. Lock and tuners only benefit tune stability if you don't know how to wind strings around the peg. The you know the only issue I've had with tuners is the the basically the gear wasn't holding. So when you were you know when you were bending the string, you were you know the gear was slipping. Uh, that's basically really the only issue. Or or the other thing is if the if it's not locked into the headstock properly, if the actual tuning key is loose in the right. headstock. Those are the only two issues I've ever had with tuners. Yep. Either right. that's what that's what I mean. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? If the if the tuner's holding, 
if it's you know if, if it's tight if, if you've got a if, if you've got a nut uh that that locks the locks the tuner or locks the post down onto the headstock i mean make sure those things are tight before you immediately go out and spend a hundred bucks on locking tuners or, or, you know, whatever. But, you know, so my, my wife is saying, Oh my God, you both look like thing one and thing two with those shirts. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we got to represent man. That's it. Tarhack in the house. Oh, Jay Steen is saying yes. Multimeter. Okay. You know what I would say, Jay, when the show is over, why don't you contact, I would say contact me, but Dave's the expert. Contact Dave, and if I'm Dave, I'm sure will be more than happy to uh, to help you out. Yeah, I'll, I'll do what I can, man. No no biggie. All right. Aaron Songs, a lot of people don't rap properly, though, Guitar Hack. Yeah. Nope. You know, I'll, I'll tell you what I do, right or wrong. This is what I do, right? So I pull the, I pull the string through. Hmm? And I pull the string long enough that it'll go. It basically my rule of thumb is that it goes to the next tuning peg, right? To that length, right? Then if it's a locking tuner, you bring it back, you lock it, and then you start spinning. If it's not a locking tuner, what I do is I put a bend in the in the string, so let's slip back out, and then I start to crank it. And I don't use those hand crankers. I do, I do it by hand, right? By hand. And then I rotate it. And I rotate it, and I'm pulling back on the string, so I'm keeping tension on it, so it wraps tightly. Yep. And every wrap is below the one before it. Yep. And I usually it works out that you get about three wraps so on the thinner strings. You might get four wraps. Right. And that's it. And you tune it to pitch, and it's end of story. So yeah. on the wound strings, you really and truthfully you only need one and a half wraps, because the the wound strings. <clears throat> They're, they're much less susceptible to, to slippage. Right. right. So, um, and, and, and yeah, the, 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 the important part of that is, is definitely pull tight when you're, when you're winding, when you're winding those strings. Yeah, keep tension on. Yeah. So I'll, I'll basically hold it down with my thumb. Yep. And the oh, other I, thing I grab, I grab it with my hand and, and pull it and literally give it a lot, yeah. a, a lot of pressure. Right. Um, the the other thing that so the thing that i do is i is is i pull through i pull it tight and then i pull it back about one tuner length and then i throw a wrap over so i've got one wrap so you got you got your hole coming out your string <laughs> your string coming out your at the hole right so i'll throw one wrap and it goes over top and then the next subsequent wraps wrap wrap below Whoa. so that way that way you've got that pinch action uh, on the string. Well, I see what you're doing. Yeah. I go strictly below, but yeah, I see yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. And, and you know, after, after I throw that first loop over, then I've, I've been the, been the rest of the string up. So it's not like flapping around and scratching up my headstocks and all that kind of thing. And right. Right. And, and then outside of that, if that's done right. And then the other thing that I do is anytime I hear, I should have it right here. Cause I got all my shit right here. Here's the other secret ingredient. Yeah, that yep. goes on the nut every time before I put strings in and I make sure when I'm tuning the strings that they're running through this. So it's pushing it into the groove that goes. That, <laughs> there's my nut sauce right there. <laughs> yeah. well, this is called big bends, big bends, nut sauce. Yeah, I just use I just use a like a five Pencil millimeter. Graphite. Yeah, that works. Graphite. Yeah. So that's what I do. Right. And then and if you remove if you do that, then the only other point of failure really is going to be if it's catching on the nut. Right. Or your saddle. I mean, again, if you're. If your saddle, yeah. yeah. If your saddles aren't right and if you're not it and right. And, and that's a that's a big thing, too. I mean, and, and those are your two points. Those are the two points you have to worry about the most. It isn't the tuners. You just got to make sure those hold. Right. Hey, you Mayhem know. is in here. Hey, Mayhem, how are you? Phil Mosley Music. Janice, if I haven't said hello, hello. Uh, Rick Hafner, I have no problem tuning my guitar. Just, you know, where is uh, Rick, man? That's what this is all about. It's all, you know, helping people out. Uh, guitar Hack, you also have to stretch your strings until they quit. Yeah, that's another thing. You know, pull on those puppies, man. Like, just yank oh, yeah. things. Tune them again. Yank on them. Tune them again. Yank on them. Just keep doing that. That's right, Twitter. 
Shave your nuts properly, people. <laughs> That's what the nut sauce is for, right? <laughs> up instead of nut sauce. Is that right, Quinn? <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> hey, two ninjas here. Welcome. Hey. Hey, Crowbar, how are you? Crowbar. Hey, you, you got a chicken guitarist. <laughs> yeah. 14 year olds are out. Oh, Crowbar shaved his nuts for this. Awesome, buddy. I'm honored. <laughs> <laughs> here we go here we go here we go things are deteriorating in a hurry <laughs> talking about brass nuts shall we anyways <laughs> yeah we'll leave that one alone <laughs> we'll leave that one alone yeah buddy we got 60 people watching this is awesome thank you all so much for checking it out thank you all so much so so what kind of uh what kind of mods then are you typically making on on uh, on your guitars? You were saying you did a fret job, or you tried a fret job. Yeah, yeah. You know, I I do. Uh, I mean, I, basically, it's just maintenance, right? I don't. If I need to, if I need to level level fretboard, you know, or level frets, level recrown, polish, whatever, I I do that. Um, you know, set up that kind of thing. It's just more maintenance than than anything. I mean, yeah, I have I have all the tools to to do a lot of that. But you know, then then again, that kind of harkens back to the to the kit building and the and you know and and that kind of thing too. So, okay, <laughs> no, it is not chicken. Taking off the gold <laughs> hardware. I think that's what that acetone was for. Get rid of that gold hardware with the acetone. Uh, guitar hack used a similar method for years, worked fairly well. However, Dave R's Guitars makes an interesting argument. I may have to try that with my next restraint. Okay, I don't know which method he was talking about, but. Oh, just the, between the way you string and the way I string. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, the one up, one below. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, because I'll tell you something, like, you know, and I, I mentioned this already a few times on the channel. Like, the this will ruin your night. Like, when I go out to do a gig, man, if I get a guitar that's acting up, it ruins my whole night. Right? Right. Um, right. Yeah. Hey, everybody, hang on. Saying? Everybody wanted to see. So you All can right. see. You guys there can you see go. the lucky dog. Yeah, it's a beautiful dog, man. <laughs> Thanks. That's a beautiful dog. Um, yeah, nothing will ruin a night quicker than if you're having issues with your guitar, whether it's a tuning thing or your pedals or whatever, like, because you're not enjoying the night anymore. Now you're just worried about what's going to happen. And, and I, I had, I've had issues like where I've had, uh, I had a bad tuner, right? right. I've had mm -hmm. that happen where, you know, you bend the string and it immediately goes out, which means that the gear isn't holding. So I've had that happen. The other thing I've had happen too, and I, I mentioned this before too, is I've had strings that unravel inside the um, inside the bridge, or the tailpiece. Sorry. Right, right. I've had that happen too, you know, and so I kind of learned the hard way, and, I, and from now, well, for the last most of the gigs already this year, I've been bringing a second guitar. Uh, Queen Queen B makes an interesting comment. <laughs> oh God, I don't know if I want to read that. <laughs> okay g string nut sauce all right That's let me moderate that troll <laughs> sorry oh, i can't help that one uh chicken guitars best tip i learned from dave r's guitar is always set up and adjust in playing position not on a bench there you go yeah yeah so there's there's kind of some theory behind that right so you lay a guitar down on a bench you the the weights push down on the neck right so it's gonna put extra bow in the neck right if you're holding it up like in play in position all that pressure is off the neck so yeah it kind of makes sense to me so you and i share another thing in common we are both massive fans of Gibson guitars. So how did that 
Well, I, I kind of alluded to that earlier. I think <laughs> the first the the first real guitar I ever put my hands on was a was a '68 custom. Yeah, and and I st- I still remember. I mean, to this day, I mean, that's been 30, 32 years ago, and, and I still remember how it played. I remember how it felt, and. Mm-hmm. I immediately said, "Man, that's that that's my that's my gig, right? That that's my that's my thing. That's a real deal, man." And I mean, he he also had like a 64 63 64 natural ash body strat um three-way three-way position or uh, three position switch. You know, this is, we're talking like pre-CBS here. Um and I hated it. I, I I tell you I hated it so much I wouldn't touch a strat for years and years. I mean it was up until the last four or five years that I actually decided to pick up and play a strat. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was that bad. I hated it that much. Wow. It was a it was kind of a V neck, and yeah, to this day people say V necks, and I immediately turn off. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like glass over just well, don't even v-necks dave's guitar channel is here and he loves v-necks yeah change your strings you guys change strings here's the that's the other thing too eh? like we you know we're just to get back to strings for a minute like you you read all these things oh you know you should change your strings after every show you should change your strings every i don't know month everybody's got a different number different value right right you know if you've got multiple guitars you know, if you got one guitar and you're playing it all the time, I get it, right? But, I mean, if you've got multiple guitars, I don't have a set time as to when I change strings. I change strings when the strings I have on it sound dead. That's when they get you. I'm the same way. You know what I mean? And you yep. know immediately, like, don't plug it in because you don't, you know. Yeah. Just, if it's if you don't have that, that ring that, well, you can tell. I mean, years, you know, like, if the strings sound flat, let's get rid of them. Then you put new strings on. So, Yep. Whether or not that's going to take a month or three months or six months, it really all depends on how much time you spent with that particular guitar. Right. <clears throat> I agree. You know? Well, there's nothing wrong with elixir strings pit, Chris. I mean, I have a I have a set of clear tones on I actually like clear the clear tones better than the elixirs, just FYI. But I mean, I don't only thing I don't like about elixirs is is when the uh, when the coating starts to shred. Yeah, I don't think I've ever tried elixirs. Hey, they're okay, um, but I I think they at least the ones I try tried, and I'm trying to remember if they were polys or nanos, and, and I I can't remember. I'll tell you, it's been a it's been a while. But the the coating started shredding on them, and uh, they just they they kind of sounded dead out of the pack to oh. me, you know. So yeah, they, they, those weren't my thing. But the the clear tones the clear tones sound pretty good. So I'm just gonna read a comment here. Uh, EVH and Gear TV Network. Uh, I'm playing a Kramer right now, guitar hack with four month old NYXLs that sound like I bought them today, and I play this guitar every day. Yeah, do you put any uh, any faith in uh, these NYXL strings or like, let's call them premium strings? <sighs> yes, or do you no. think strings are just strings? No, 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 no. Uh, they're no, they're they're not created equal, right? Um, the NY NYs are are great strings. Don't please don't get me wrong. Um, NYs are really hard on soft fret material. Yeah, that's what I hear. Yeah, uh, I, I <clears throat> on a couple of my less cheap guitar, cheaper guitars, uh, I've, I've, I, yeah, I, I've seen them just flatten frets in no time. Really? Eh? Yeah, yeah. Like pull every bit of crown off the fret. Oh shit! Just, psh, looks like you looks like you sanded it. Wow. Um. And I guess chicken guitars, Kalen had the same thing. And that, that that's just the thing, right? I mean, you know, if you've got like, if you've got good fret material and you're, you know, you're going to find good fret material on, on your, like your U.S. made K 
Gibsons, your you know your Fenders, your PRSs, right, right, so on. So your higher end instruments, your more professional grade or you know professional end instruments. Um, you know, I don't think you have to worry about that. Stainless frets obviously aren't gonna aren't gonna be affected by that, but you know it. I I I I've bought NYXLs and I've used. I don't think I have. I don't have any here right now. But I've bought the NYXLs and what I'll do is I'll put them on like my. Not that any of my guitars are crap, but more on my better guitars. Let's say right. Sure. And yeah, man, they they last a long time. They do. They you do. Know, they last a long time, right? Now, you know the argument is well, they cost twice as much. Well, they kind of last twice as long. <laughs> at least <laughs> and so you're not i mean you're spending the money up front but you're gonna have strings that last a long a long time well, you know i used to be an ernie ball guy too for a lot of years and so i got another little so i had yeah. some issues yeah i know you had the issues with the diderios the the ball unraveling right yeah okay so i had the i had a about a three pack of the Darius did the same thing. And I actually wrote to, or I actually sent an email to their customer service. Oh, yeah. And so the Dario earned my respect because the, the guy in their customer service department shoots me an email back like the next day and says, Hey, can you, do you still have the packages? Do you still have the bags? I'm like, yeah, well, I kept the bags because, I mean, I had I had three strings right right in a row, three E strings unravel right in a row. So I kept all that stuff. And uh, he's like, "Hey, can you just take a picture of it and send it to me?" And I said, "Sure." And I took a picture of the box and the and the three bag or the two of the three bags that I had. And he's he sends me an email back says, "All right, here I'll send you out how to you know I'll send you out five five uh, five nines." Nice. That's what, that's what you have. And I'm like, he's like, does that work? I'm like, <laughs> send them away, man. So I've got, so on my, on my white SG right there, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I had one unravel on me the other night. And uh, so I had that extra, I have, I still have like, I think two or three more or three or four more left in that five pack that he sent me. Maybe they must have had a bad run because the same thing happened. And it's funny because I switched. I was saying I was on Ernie Ball for the longest time, and I switched right. to Darius because I, for whatever reason, I just started, I don't know, I found them easier on the fingers. and They're probably exactly the same strings. It could all be in my head for all I know, right? But, <laughs> you know, I, I just found them easier on, on the fingers. And But then I was having that unraveling thing. But unlike you, I wasn't smart enough to take a photo and send it to them or even contact them. I just went out and I bought a bunch of single high E strings and funny enough, they happen to be Ernie balls. And yeah, so I kind of fixed it that way. Yeah. Uh, music therapy. Laz is here. Welcome. Hey, Laz. Okay. I'm just uh, scrolling down here, making sure that I haven't missed anyone. Thank you so much for posting the links, Nocturnal. Really appreciate that. So, yeah, I mean, Going forward, if you ever have that issue again, just yeah, no, no, yeah, send me I, an email. Yeah, definitely, I'm going to do that. Uh, Brian Stewart is saying, just buy your strings in the store instead of online. I always buy them at the store. I never buy them online. I think he's talking about. Apparently, there's a yeah. Somebody was saying. I think I saw it earlier. Somebody was saying about this whole counterfeit string thing. Right. Yeah, it's that's become an issue. Zach yeah, Thomas, you're welcome. Hey, Zach. Uh, uh, guitar hack and days. How long ago did you purchase these strings? Oh shit! Uh, f I think for me it would have been last year, late last year. I couldn't tell you exactly. Yeah, uh, mine would have been around the same time. Okay, so maybe it was just a, uh, they might have had a bad batch. Yeah, that's the only thing I can think of is they had a had a yeah, bad. You're batch. mentioning the three pack of strings. There's my three pack of uh, Daddario's right there, and look what we pay in Canada, folks: eighteen dollars and ninety nine cents. Now, actually, I didn't pay that much because I think this was around. I bought these around Christmas, and they were on sale. But normally priced twenty bucks for three. There you go. 
That's a 10 pack there. Okay. Yeah. Minor nines. <laughs> Yeah. None, to, none to 46, man. I was at I was at a thing. I'll talk about it on Thursday. I was at a thing this last weekend, Cosmo Fest, and they had all kinds of three packs of strings. And I'm like, hey, no way, yeah. And they were on sale. It's like, I'll buy some strings. Of course, all they had was freaking tens. It's like, come on, man. So it's like <laughs> one pair of nines that I – one set of three pack of nines that I could pick up. So it was terrible. Yeah, Crowbar, hopefully they got past that lot. Yeah, you know, they must yeah. have had a bad run. They must have had a bad run there for a bit. Uh, Gary Thunder, Guitar Hack. Phil McKnight did a video on counterfeit to Dario's strings a few months ago. There you go. So well, yeah, and and, and so the the other the other thing you you do is is on the on all the Dario bags, right? They have the player circle code, and always always enter those in. You get free points. I mean, you're gonna you're gonna replace strings anyway, so might as well get the points and then buy some strings with the points later on. I'm looking at my package of players. Player circle. Where's that? Pull, that pull your back. But it, it'll be on one of the. It'll be on the bag inside. Oh, on the actual bag. Okay. Yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah, and that also tells you if they're legit strings too. Uh, Todd Flores. I went to register my NY, NYXLs on theirs Players Club, and they came up counterfeit. I sent them in, and they gave me replacements. Wow, that's customer service, man. Yeah. Uh, Krell Bar Guitar Hack. You're one of the few people I know that uses nines on twenty three and three quarter inch scale. I use nines. You know, it, like I don't know, man. I. This whole thing about different strings, and I, I mentioned this before too. I put nines, nines for me are like hot sauce. I put that shit on everything. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, mean, I don't yep. care what the scale length is. If it's, you know, a Strat, if it's a Les Paul scale, if it's a PR, I don't give a rat size. I put nines on everything. And then there's that whole thing. Well, don't you feel a tension? I can hear the tension, man. I don't, I'm bending, you know, when you're bending notes and that, I'm, I'm using my ear. You know, my ears, my only, guy, like I'm not going to overbend all of a sudden because I put nines on a stride compared to a Les Paul or vice versa. You know what I mean? Or underbend. Right. I don't know. I, I, I maybe, maybe I'm a Neanderthal. I don't know. <laughs> the you know the I mean? only guitar, the only guitar, electric guitar that I own that has anything other than nines oh. is the BC Rich right here, and that's because it's tuned to D standard. Okay, I that. Yeah. Yeah, and it has tens. Well, that's the other thing too, right? I got guitars, depending on what band I'm playing with, I'm either going E flat or I'm going E. And, you know, I got nines tuned down E flat. It's fine. Nobody died. Everybody's okay. You know, like, I don't have a problem with it, you know, and I'll play. Yeah. Do they feel a little slinkier? Sure. But I'm okay with that. You know, it's not like I'm playing spaghetti. You know what I mean? It's, it's still fine. Right. You know, I, I don't know. I, I guess it's just a everyone has a different touch or preference or whatever. But sure. it for me, that's just, that's just not a big big deal. <laughs> Sorry, but uh, he's freaking out. It's all right. Gear TV got a nice Dario shirt by using up his string points. I didn't even know this existed. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> thanks for letting me know. I yeah, could have had twenty Dario shirts at this point. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you can you can buy strings, you can buy shirts, you can buy. I mean, I no idea that even existed. Man. Yeah, you can buy straps, guitar straps. I mean, yeah, whatever. No, crawl bar. I didn't take it that way, buddy. No worries, man. No worries. Yeah, everybody's got you know. Well, Billy Gibbons. Everybody uses a Billy Gibbons example. He uses sevens. He uses eights. Yeah. 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 It's I mean, like, you know, then then there's the then there's the flip into that where. Like SRV used what thirteens? You ain't never gonna catch me using thirteens. Yeah. Uh -uh. Yeah. Not it, even on my acoustics. Uh. -uh. It, yeah. You know what? It's 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 that. It's like action. It's all that kind of stuff. And it's all like you know. I remember I bought it. Well, the Telecaster that I'm actually gonna be selling. Hopefully, when, back when I bought it, right? Mm -hmm. I remember getting into a big argument with the guy in the store because he he goes. I go, the, I don't like the action on this. It's a little bit high. And he said, well, this is factory spec. I go, is a factory playing it or am I playing it? <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, yeah, like, you know what I mean? Like, do you want to sell the guitar? 
If you don't want to sell the guitar, hold on to it. That's terrific. But if right. you want to sell the guitar, please drop the action. And he was talking. I, 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 it was crazy. It's like, buddy, I, I'm trying to help you to make a sale here. Drop the action. Just drop it a little bit. Right. I'm talking like a quarter turn or whatever. Like He goes, well, there'll be a little bar factory spec. And he's going, it's going to buzz like crazy and this and that. It's like the whole world is going to end because he's, you know, he, <laughs> he's going against the the factory spec of Fender, you know? Right. And so he, he, he changed it. He dropped it a little bit and I picked up the guitar and there was a certain, you know, he hit that, that point for me where I'm playing, it's not fighting me. It's working. It's basically playing itself at that point. I right. go, okay. And then I looked at him, I go, listen, do you hear any buzzing? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> Queen Queen B got her shout out in. <laughs> got her shout out. Scared the shit out of me at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so I, you know what I'm saying? Like at the end of the day, and it, and I, I ended up buying the guitar for that. Like I I had the guitar for like 30 days because they give a, you a 30 day thing, and then you bring it back if you don't like it. Right. I literally took it back, and I'm like, you know what? I don't want this guitar. And the guy's like, well, why don't you want it? And then that's when we got into the argument. And then right. eventually he adjusted it, and I ended up keeping it. Right. You know, so yeah, it, it's it's all personal preference. That's all it is. I agree. Hey, Broxel is here. Welcome. Man, you guys are awesome tonight. Yeah. Cool. Well, we're we're over an hour now. We're an hour and, and ten minutes. So, did you want to go? <laughs> John's tropical reflections. Here's to being a Neanderthal and using nines on everything. <laughs> That's, hey, that's what I do. Buddy. I mean, with the exception of that one guitar, man, it's it's nines nine to forty six on most every um, on most things. Just yeah. uh, FYI, Brad Miller, go catch the sunset. I hope you're enjoying your vacation, buddy. Those pictures look fantastic. I wish I was in Florida, man. Have a good one, Brad. Take care, buddy. Rob two twelve is here. Welcome, <laughs> Friedman Club. <laughs> Freedom starting Club. a Freedman Club, yeah. No, we, we we got the Gibson Club here. <laughs> yeah, we got guys on Gibson all the time. Come on, come on. <laughs> hey, yeah. Bobby Lopez is here. Welcome. So let me just take this uh, this moment to make a couple of announcements. I thought we're going to end the show. We'll go a little bit longer, but before okay. I forget, why we got some people in the well, house, I tell you what, Hack. While, while you make your announcement, let me get this. Let me get this guy outside. Yeah, I know. Perfect. Perfect timing. All right. So. Uh, folks, as you know, the fundraiser for uh, the Rock Off Cancer, I ended that last week. The campaign is now closed. The Guitar Hack store at this moment is closed. I want to thank all of you so much for contributing. You guys are fantastic. We ended up selling over 70 items. I'm still waiting to hear back from Teespring and then PayPal and this and that. I'm going to shoot a video. When I get the payout, I'm going to shoot a video and I'll show you how much money we're able to raise. It is over $500 Canadian. So it that, that's absolutely fantastic. I can't thank you all so much. I can't thank you all enough for contributing to that. That was absolutely fantastic. So I want to make that announcement. Uh, the second thing I want to mention is if anyone is uh, interested in supporting the channel, or guitar picks, and there's my dog. Uh, I have a link below. Um, so there's a, a PayPal link below if you want to support the channel. If you want some picks as well, uh, shoot me an email at guitarhack66 at gmail.com, and I'll get back to you on that. Uh, what else? Uh, Thursday, we're going to have a show, uh, my solo show Thursday at 8 o'clock. Uh, next week, Tuesday show, that's still up in the air, but I'll let you know, um, well before that, if there's going to be a, a Thursday show or not. Um, if you're not sub to the channel, folks, please sub. If you're in here and you like what you see, uh, please sub to the channel. I'm approaching 750. I'm nine away from 750. So if you're not sub, please sub and uh, please help me get to 750. And, uh, yeah, and you guys all rock. Sub each other. Let's keep this community growing. I mean, it's it's fantastic what we got here. Uh, Dave, Dave R's channel has taken off. Let's all sub each other, and let's let's keep this whole thing growing 
uh, keep it positive and, uh, and just a place to hang out, man. Just, it's just a lot of fun. And are you back? I'm back. All right. Perfect. Got all my announcements done. Okay. All right. So, um, so is there any guitars that you're kind of, I know, well, you're off guitars now, actually. You're into this whole Helix thing now, right? <laughs> well, dude, I, I, I'm digging the Helix. So, yeah. Uh, there is one guitar I have on the radar. Oh, okay. That's the uh, the Kramer SM1. Ah. Uh, yeah, that one's, that one's really high. I, I look every day to see if anybody has it in stock yet. <laughs> I will I will be buying one, so. Right, right. Is it? Like, I don't know squat about Kramer. Is okay. Is that like the, the, a new model that just came out? So it's a, it's a throwback. They they re-released it. They re okay, it's a re-release. Okay. Yeah, so, it, okay, so it's the, uh, it's basically the same as the old Stage Master, the old Kramer Stage Master, if you remember those. It was the, the, the shredder, um, kind of the shredder guitar back in the 80s. Floyd Rose. Uh, it's a neck, yeah, Floyd Rose, neck through. Right. Um, it's, uh, I, I absolutely am not going to buy the EMG version. So, uh, cause I am not a huge fan of, of active electronics. <laughs> it's another thing we got in common. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's all Seymour Duncan loaded. So it's, uh, JB in the bridge. And then, uh, uh, they're, the two singles are actually, uh, are, uh, I think they're trying to remember, are they hot rails? Um, and okay. yes, that is correct, Rick. The SM does stand for Stage Master. They couldn't use this, the, the Stage Master moniker because somebody else had taken it. So, so that's your 80s shred guitar because yeah. you don't have anything with the Floyd, do you? Yeah, the BC. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, it has the Floyd. Okay. But it it stays in permanent, you know, D yeah. standard. So I want I want something that I can put in either E flat or or you know E standard mm -hmm. that has a Floyd. So guys and girls, let that be a lesson. So numero uno, if you own a Floyd Rose, don't change tunings. Whatever tuning you stick it in, <laughs> it needs to stay there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I I owned a Floyd. I owned a Floyd. I owned an Ibanez with a Floyd. And yeah. I like them, right? I, I mean, you know, there, there's something cool about them. Yeah. You have Mozzie. That's right. It, it is the Motley Crew BC Rich. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I like Floyds. They're, they're a little bit fiddly, uh, mm. you know, and a bit of a pain. But once you set them up, man, they, they're rock solid. Yeah, yeah. What I liked about my Floyd is the fine tuning, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That was cool. I mean, you, you got you guys have everybody that's 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 been in one of my live streams, and and you guys have seen me play this, play the BC Rich. I I tell you, I, and I'm being as absolutely honest as I can be. I haven't tuned that guitar since I pulled it back out of the case. So, and, and you hear, <laughs> you know, I'm not easy on it when I, when I start railing on the, you know, I, I'll drop it all the way down, you know, with the whammy bar. I don't care, but it's, mm -hmm. it just stays in tune. Mm -hmm. So once they're set up, right. Yeah. Yeah. So how did this whole Helix thing start with you? Oh, we have we have Mr. Eric to thank thank for that. So Eric's the guy to blame for that. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm blaming it on Eric. <laughs> well, no, it 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 started, um, it started actually a long time ago. Uh, I I've always liked the idea of having a, you know, having an all in one, mm -hmm. and you know, so several years ago. Thanks, Mozzie. Um, several years ago, uh, of course, I, I, I ditched that idea for, for tube amps and, and pedals and was just really hardcore about tube amps and pedals for, for quite a few years. Mm -hmm. And, 
you know, and then, of course, I'd see, I'd see you know, something about the Helix, and I'd, I'd watch it. I'm like, man, that sounds pretty good. And then yeah. I, I, I found Eric through, I think, through your channel and started watching some of his stuff. And, and uh, so I was t- uh, I'm trying to remember which which video it was. I don't know. Eric could probably tell you because I comment. It was like one of the first ones I commented on. I'm like, dude, that thing sounds just amazing. Like, yeah. I'm going to have to get me one of those. So, well, the opportunity presented itself, and uh, now I'm the proud owner of a Helix. Yeah, yeah. well, I think for your situation, it's perfect, right? Because you you got, I mean, you've got everything running through your computer. Right. You're not, you're not, you're playing at home. You're not carting it from place to place. No, nope. you know what I mean? You can sit there and tweak and dial and whatever. Like you're basically, you're, you're, it's, it's a toy that you have at home that you can, you know, dial up any tone that you want. Right? But, but I will tell you this, <clears throat> I wouldn't be afraid to take it out. I wouldn't yeah. be afraid at all. I wouldn't hesitate at all to take it and and play on a gig if if, if that was my thing. Yeah, when, when like I I I saw one and I tried one on Saturday, and what surprised me is I, it was a bigger footprint in person than what I thought. Yeah, it's 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 not small. Yeah, it's a big unit. At, at the same time, you know, you, the way I look at it is if I were going to go and go out gigging. Do I want to carry an amp and a pedal board and a couple guitars or a guitar? Or do I want to carry an amp or not an amp? Do I want to carry a guitar and a Helix? I would absolutely take that over carrying, lugging around a heavy, heavy ass tube amp. Yeah. Well, you know, the thing is though, like you're assuming that I I have a PA that I can run through. True. True. Right. Don't. I mean, you know, even even a helix and a and a and a good FRFR. I mean, that's got you're, there's enough volume. There should be enough volume in that to mm. be able to. Yeah, run a power. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what I played it through was a powered speaker. Yeah. Right. But um, I know Brian uh, Cote's in here, but he was telling me that the speaker that they had hooked up to it wasn't the greatest speaker. That there's there's better ones available. You know, the flatter response. Right. Sure. Sure. Right. The one thing that surprised me about it is it felt like it was playing through an amp. Yeah. It, it, it and that's the thing, right? And that's kind of what I was showing late last night. And uh if I don't know if Will's still here, but uh Will and Dogpaw were hanging out with me r- real late last night and, and uh you know, Dogpaw asked me, he he's like, Well, you know, how does it feel? And, you know, I showed him. It plays just like an amp. Yeah. Like you know, I, I, I really didn't have enough time to take take it through its pace. I literally played it for, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes. You know, right. and I wasn't, and I wasn't um, playing, you know, uh, what do you call it? I wasn't playing through custom patch. I was playing through whatever the right. Right. patches were. And, you know, I, I just, the, 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 a lot of the tones I found them too shrill. Like, I, I'd be tweaking them quite a bit, right? Right, right, and you know, and you know that's the thing that that's the beauty of it. <laughs> yeah. you, can, you can pull anything out, anything out of it you want, and and I, I I literally wasn't joking last night when I when I said you you could feasibly play a play a full gig off of three patches, or maybe six. Yeah, patches. well, yeah. The, like I I I mean I used to use a multi effects. Right. Okay. Right. So, I mean, long story short, I didn't play for a number of years. And when I, when I got back into playing, um, I basically had to do like a gig right away. And I, I'd been out of the, the whole music thing. I had no idea what was out there, whatever. Sure. And I'm, 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 and I didn't know if I was going to continue playing whatever. So I was looking for, you know, bang for your buck. Right, right. I remember walking into a store and it's like, listen, I need all these sounds. What's the cheapest way to do it? You know, I mean, instead of spending thousands on pedals. So I ended up getting a, a boss multi effects. I'm not going to say which one because I know some people swear by it, but <laughs> yeah, I don't want to piss anybody off. But anyway, so I, but it was good for the time. It was good. Right. 
So I did that. I know what you mean about because I did that. I programmed, you know, patches, which is basically the same thing. You know, you, right. could, you know, all these you could combine all these different effects, and okay, that's the number one. Assign that to number one. Assign this to number two. Blah 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 blah. Right. So and then and then I had different banks. So like I would have basically a, a bank for humbucker guitars, banks for single coils. Like that all worked out. I got you know. I mean, like anything else, you screw around with something long enough, you'll 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 get it to your liking, right? And I, and I gigged with that for whew, a couple of years. Gotcha. Right. And then and then I I then I took the deep dive in a in the pedals and I got a video. A old video where I A B a pedal sound to this multi effect sound, and it's like night and day. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, you were you were there, you were there when I did my, you know. Yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, yeah, it, it's, it's come I mean, a long way, man. They they've come they've come a really long way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean. You know, and, and, and now with, with Yamaha behind Helix, you know, it, it's it, – or Line 6, I should say, not just Helix, Line 6, period. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't see it going anywhere but up. Yeah. Well, what I found even that little bit of time that I was playing it, I found that, you know what, this would – I could see where this would make you play more. Yeah. I've, because, I've, played, I've played more since I've since I've gotten this thing yeah. than, than I have before. Because you get that instant gratification tone wise. Exactly. Well, and, and you know, and it's not even that. It's just it, it's you, you sit there and and just start noodling away, and next thing you know, you're you're playing this or you're playing that or you're you know or or whatnot. And it's just it, it's just more of a joy to play because. It does. It, it is. It, I guess you're right. It it is that instant gratification, that instant tone gratification. Yeah. Uh, Brian Stewart is saying, "Guitar hike. You don't really collect pedals, though, do you? Just not, yeah. I don't collect pedals. Yeah. I, I did a show on that a couple of weeks ago. It's like here's the pedals that I have. I'm not saying these are the best pedals. I'm not saying anything. I'm. I don't. You know. I'm not trying to sell anybody on pedals. But my whole thing of that was once you get a, your group of pedals that hit all the check all the boxes that you need and they work together, you know, stop. <laughs> Don't keep right. trying to reinvent the wheel. Once oh, you get it, they work, stop. And for me, that took, I think, 12. I, but I got more. I got a few over here. I'm not using <laughs> Actually, I'm thinking about getting another one. Um, you want the Timmy. If, uh, Dave's guitar channel is in here. I'm going to be ordering uh, a K-Line Super Sky, which is like, Okay. A you, really you want, dirt cheap version of a Timmy. Yeah, you want the Timmy, right? Yeah, I want to. But I'm not paying 250 bucks yeah. or well, closer to three Canadian for a Timmy. I mean, unless yeah. that thing wants to friggin' iron my socks and <laughs> doing that. So it was funny. Using it, like honestly, I'm just looking for a lead boost. Uh, right, right. to replace a tube screamer. That's it. So yeah, you're, you're, you're over the mid you're, you're over the mid hump with the uh tube screamer well i i was having issues uh just i don't have consistent volume boost because oh, it gotcha. really depends on what rig i'm plugged into oh gotcha gotcha i'm using mind you that if anybody watched my video that i posted yesterday um where i was playing covering this is for will it's a kiss song um <laughs> And I hit the tube screamer, it sounded glorious, right? But yeah, yeah. you know, I had that whole Ace Frilly thing going. And but you were using a two amp rig on that, weren't oh you? Oh god. I was, playing out of, <laughs> I was playing out of a Marshall and a Hot Rod Deluxe at the same time. Yeah. how can oh. you not love that? <laughs> and I'll tell you, and I was using my Les Paul with P nineties. It's like you can't get better than that. I'm no, no, it don't get much better. You can't get better than that. So no. anyway, but yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm looking. Uh, Brian LPD makes a couple of boosts. You might. I Brian Stewart. I, I talked to. I asked Lawrence Petros. He doesn't make a Timmy clone. I asked him. Uh, Gary Tholander buy an EQ. Yeah, I've heard that. Yeah, an EQ. Yeah, I mean that. That's another. That's a, that's a really good. That's a really good. Uh, really good shout. Is is. 
because you can use an EQ pedal as a booster, right? Yeah. Well, I've got the thing is I've got, uh, you know, well, that's the thing. I want to put a little bit of hair on it too, right? Power is your welcome stack an EP booster with your overdrive. It's a great. I've got my EP booster as my always on pedal at the end of the chain, but I know what you mean. Yeah, throw it in front. Yeah, I mean, you, you could you could even throw an EQ on the end of your chain and just use, I mean, that, that'll, it'll put more hair because you're, you're, you're pushing the signal even harder. Yeah. What I do now is I use the tube screamer and then if that doesn't cut it, I've got a spark booster behind it. Right. Right. And that's just a clean boost. That'll give me that little bit of extra volume. Extra volume. But, right. So, but, and I, and it's on the board anyway, cause I use it for clean leads. Gotcha. Uh, Will Varela, thanks to Kiss Reference. Can you kick me in the nuts next, please? <laughs> Let me go put on my steel toes, buddy. <laughs> uh, guitar hack, 50 bucks, 10 band EQ, and a single path. Yeah, yeah, the EQ thing. Yeah. Thank you, Zach Thong. Zach Thong liked my video. Yeah. Yeah, the, but both of them, yesterday's and today's, was, was good. Yeah, you know what? Today's was kind of weak. It was like literally the first time we ever played Lick It Up, and I'm playing it wrong. <laughs> there's, uh, there's, yeah, I, I just, it's like, let's just try it. And I'd like, what the hell? I'll post it. Tomorrow, folks, check out, I'm going to put a video going up. Uh, cheap Trick, I Want You to Want Me. That one we actually played properly. So check that one out. That's coming out tomorrow. And yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that one. If, if Phil Mosley music is here Thursday, I'm finally posting the video uh, with your backing track. Finally put something down today. Oh, yeah. There we go. Another another good shout out to Phil Mosley. Yeah. Guy can play, man. Guy can okay. play. He, and he does some really, really good backing tracks. Yeah. So if, if you guys want, want to play some backing tracks, go check out Phil Mosley music. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I I, uh, I was talking about him last week, and he thanked me. He says, man, I got six subs just from you mentioning my name. I'm mentioning your name again, and so is Dave R. Yeah. No music, Phil. folks. If he's in here, yeah. And there he is. Yeah. Phil, yeah. Phil Phil's, Phil's one of my one of my regulars, too. Um, yeah, he's and, a good dude. Uh, yeah. The, the guy does good stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I did. I I did the one he has. He's got one in G, G minor or something. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Phil, it's coming Thursday. You'll know it because I used your icon as a thumbnail. And Aaron, Aaron songs, another. That guy's good. Mm -hmm. I don't know. If, I don't know if you caught any of his live. He, he did a couple live streams the other day. Dude, Dude that's good. good. Telling me to check out one of his live streams, but. I don't know. I didn't. I didn't see it that same day, though. Maybe did it another time. Dude is really good. You guys definitely should check out Aaron's song. Aaron's songs. Yeah, really good guitar player. There's there's so many man. Like that's like the community. I mean, Quentin James. His name just popped up. Quentin, yeah. hey, Bill Mosley. Quentin just subbed you, man. You know, there's so many good players you know, on here, so much to learn from. I mean, that's why I wanted to have Dave R on because, you know, he's, he's a go-to guy for me for, um, you know, guitar stuff. Hey, there's Lando 27 Music. How are you, buddy? Hey, talk, speak of the devil. Speak of another one. <laughs> speak of another one. Yeah, I mean, there's so many good resources here. You know, that's what it's all about, growing the community, sharing resources. And, you know, if anybody's got questions about playing or, you know, Actually, Quentin, Quentin wants me to teach him a Kiss song other than Lick It Up. Like, hit me up, man. <laughs> a million times better than Lick It Up. I, I can I can show you a couple, too. A couple of the, uh, like, the, the other two that I know. <laughs> you know who's been bugging me like crazy to teach Kiss songs to? Who's that? Will. Is here? <laughs> Will? Th does Will need to learn some Kiss Is songs? Here? <laughs> <laughs> That's a double kick in the notes right there. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> this is turning into one of your night shows, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> I don't know, dude. That that one that that first night that that you that you were on, man, you guys, you between you and Will and Quentin and Oh, that was nasty. <laughs> oh my god, that was so funny. 
I, yeah. I near, I, dude, I was, I was sitting here. I really nearly pissed myself laughing so hard. You know what's right? What's funny is I, I had the headphones on, eh? And like I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go to bed, right? I'm, I'm in bed, you know, on the, on the phone with the headphones on. Yeah, yeah. And I was trying to keep it in, man. And I woke my wife up. I was laughing so hard. She's like, "What the hell?" She thought I was crying because I was like, <laughs> "Like this." What's wrong with crying? It's like, oh man, I'm laughing my ass off. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, you oh, guys, god. you guys just had me rolling. Oh, that was bad. That was yeah, so that, much fun. That line about the buffet, man. I just, <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, for real, for real. <laughs> <laughs> was... Oh man. Holy shit. Oh, that was great. <laughs> Quentin still nursing his burns. <laughs> still putting aloe on those, huh? <laughs> Oh, this shit. <laughs> you know what he sent me today, too, man? Or was it yesterday? He was at a grocery store, and he found a box of chocolate Frosted Flakes. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, showing it to me. Look, look. I go, they're great. <laughs> Will, Will's going to go hang himself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. All right. I, think I love gonna... you, Will. I think we're going to wrap this up. So, Dave, is there anything that you wanted to say to the folks? We still got over 50 people in here, buddy. Oh, my God. You guys, no, other, nothing, other, nothing other than you guys just absolutely rock. And and uh, I, I'm i going to speak for myself, but I, I, I think I speak for Hack as well. You guys show, showing all the support, man, is, is awesome. And, uh, yeah. You guys are you guys are absolutely great, and 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 without you, we wouldn't be here. So, big thanks to you guys. Hats off to you guys. Thanks so much. We really do appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. You can't speak for me. That's exactly. Yeah, week after week, you know, I come on, I do these live shows, and I see like you know 40, 50, 60, some up crazy numbers of people, and I, I it still blows my mind week in, week out, that they're all tuning in and checking it out, and we're all having this. Rock and Dave Byron. In hey, one- it's Rock and Dave Byron. You know? And we're all having this much fun, and, you know, it's just, yeah, I, I just I look forward to it all week, man. I really do, you know? These yeah. shows, having guys like you on, you know, I mean, you know, I, again, through the, the YouTubes and the internets, you know, I'm meeting people like yourself and, and you know, uh, kindred spirits, you know, and yeah, it's just, it's an absolute blast, man. And Wizard One Music is there. How are you, man? Wow. So, folks, if you're not uh, sub to Dave R, I have in the cards, I have uh, Dave R's uh, channel. So, definitely check Dave R. Fantastic dude and an encyclopedia. If you ever want to know anything about guitars, if you're working on guitars, you got any kind of question, Dave's a man and he's a damn good guitar player as well. And and he's a, he's now he's now gonna be the the, the helix guru <laughs> of the community. No way. Uh, <laughs> no, that's Eric. That that honor goes to Eric. I got Eric goes is to the Eric. Eric. Yeah. And Eric's just, Eric's an awesome dude as well, for sure, man. Yeah, he is. And 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 I I, I one other thing that I do want to say real quick. One yeah. thing, I do want to give Eric a quick shout out. Um, he uh, he he's been he he's been a great guide for you know for, for me getting this thing up and running. So, oops, oops, the phone. <laughs> I'll make that call back in a little bit. So, but yeah, no thanks, Eric. Go uh, ahead. Sorry, I just want to say hello to Fred Fritch. And Ivan Carter, I don't think. And Wizard One Music, if I haven't said hello. Yeah, you guys are awesome. Love I love doing these every week. Hopefully, I will catch you all on uh, on Thursday on my regular solo show. Uh, if you're not a sub, please sub. Please hit the thumbs, folks. Really appreciate that. Let's negate those uh, those other thumbs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. R2 uh, must have been early today. I don't know. Yeah, it's like they can see into the future. This show sucks before I even saw it. Anyways, yeah, so uh, please thumbs up. Please sub the channel if you're not already sub. Sub Dave's guitar, Dave R's guitar channel. And, uh, yeah, man, and let's all sub each other. Let's support this community. Let's keep it strong, and let's keep it growing. And we'll catch you all on Thursday. Cheers, everybody. Have a good one, guys.